to my series of book reviews for great children's poetry books in honor of National Poetry Month. I have a few more books to share with you today, and these are ones that I've chosen that I because I feel like they're going to really engage kids with poetry and make them want to read it and write it and perform it. I'm going to start with a few haiku books because haiku is also one of my favorite poetry modes. Yesterday I talked a little bit about concrete poetry, but haiku is also really fun. Uh, this one is called The Cuckoo's Haiku and Other Birding Poems, and it's by Michael Rosen. And I chose this book primarily because it's been a long winter. And looking at these birds makes me think of spring and summer, and it makes me really excited. And I love that National Poetry Month coincides with April and that hope of spring. And what better way to celebrate birds and the coming of spring than a great haiku? So you see, all of my books are going to be, all the books I choose are going to be beautifully illustrated. I love great illustrations. I really feel like good books should be engaging visually as well as, you know, the words that are on the page. Um, so, gorgeous books about birds and haiku. I also have chosen Wonton, a Cat Tale Told in Haiku by Lee Wardlaw. And this book and the next book is a collection of haiku that tell uh, a larger story. So this is the cat's day. The cat has come to live with a new family. And, and through a series of haiku, it just tells, it tells a story of how he's learning to fit in, what his day is like. If you're not a cat fan and you'd prefer something else, like a dog, might I suggest Dog Coo uh, by Andrew Clements. And this, like Wonton, is a series of haiku, but it tells the story of the dog. So there's an overarching narrative. Illustrations are really fun. It's just a fun, it's just a fun way to get exposed to haiku. So that one's dog cue. Next on the list is Mirror Mirror. This one's by Marilyn Singer. And this is a book of reverso poems. So when you do a reverso poem, you write your poem. So they have the, they have the original poem here. And then they flip it. So the second column is this poem flipped on its head. So the last line is now the first line, and the second to the last line is now the second line. And it tells a different story when told backwards. So it's a very creative way to use words um, to see that the word, the, not just word choice, but word order is so important in how you're telling a story. And they're kind of fun and surprising. And of course, once again, it's a gorgeous book. And this one actually has a companion book called Follow, Follow, and it's another collection of reverso poems. So another great pair. Next up, I'm going to share with you Lemonade and Lemonade and other poems squeezed from a single word. This one's by Bob Raska. And uh, this exercise takes one word and then you take only letters from within that word to write a poem about that word. So for minivan, it's Ivan N, Ava N, Ian N, Maya N, Nan N, Anna N, a minivan. It's another fun way to kind of play with letters, play with words and meaning. Last in this one, this video, I'm going to share uh, In Our Backyard Garden. And these are poems by Eileen Spinelli. And through this series of poems, it tells a story about a garden, but it's also telling a story about a family and how they work together. Uh, there's a wedding in here, there's a dad who loses his job, and there's some, there's some stress about that, and then he gets another job. Um, Grandpa gets sick at some point. There's haircuts that happen. And it's just all this stuff that happens in the garden, but it's telling the story of this incredible family relationship um, all in poetry. So, and I really like Eileen Spinelli as well. So that's all I'll share for you for this one. I hope you can use those books with your kids and create some fantastic poetry. Thanks.